So you're telling me you just like, oh, fuck it, you know what? I'm just going to go and risk the shit and just go and just do, do Yeah, something. yeah. Yeah, and we got chased. Wow. We got chased. We got chased one night. We were riding on the side of the highway because there's some good spots, some good little highway <laughs> wall parts that were real visible. So we were, we were bombing that. And there was a police car that rolled by oh, and, made a, and, made a, and made a U-turn. And so we had to just take off. We, we, were, we were running full speed and then there was a there was a, there was a drop and I remember miscalculating my steps what and fell pretty much chest first luckily I didn't hit my face but I took a bad fall like yeah you would have been winded right I was winded and I took a bad fall I fell right on my chest and I remember Lou was like you alright killer killer podcast KillerKellerOfficial.com You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller Podcast. Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, most definite effect. You know what time it is, people. It's that Thursday flex. Uh, big shout to graffitikings.co.uk and everybody has got the Keller Vision app. You know we're rolling out here. Strictly for the hardcore sport and art business. Free download, iPhone, Android. Um, we have a very special guest. As you can tell, we are Zooming it. We're, we're booming with the Zooming. Um, to say this guy was an influence growing up, and to a lot of other people, not just me, is an understatement. Um, the Crooklyn Dodger, the original Slaughterhouse Inc., Juice Crew. Oh, hold tight. It's Master Ace inside the place. How are you, gent? What's going on? What's happening? Yeah, I'm good. I'm better now, brother. I'm better All now. All right. All right. How's it over there? All right. Yeah, it's good. It's raining today, but it's good. It's good. It's good. Whereabouts are you in the world, brother? I'm in New Jersey. Uh, I moved out from, I moved out of the, the boroughs of New York City about 2006. Right. So I left, Brook, I left Brooklyn and moved to what we would call the suburbs, just away from all the hustle and bustle. And it's been a good move for me. But I'm, I'm really just a hop skip from Brooklyn. Like I, I can be in Brooklyn in 45 minutes. Oh, I mean, I wish I was in Brooklyn within 45 minutes, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, listen, there's a reason why we connected. And it's something that I kind of brought up. I, I've kind of been massaging the idea since since I connected with you, because I know that you have a, a, a hidden history and depth and understanding of graffiti. And the and when I bring it up with people, to be fair, people are like, how did you know that? And I'm like, yeah, no, I just knew it from back in the day. And I can't remember where it was that I read it or something. We all know you as the versatile MC, the freestyle MC, the the, the legacy that the back to back from before I was even into hip hop. But the, the 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 lineage of most artists that come from that background is they also do other disciplines, and yours was very much of a time being graffiti, right? Yeah, I um my my second album, Slaughterhouse. There's actually a photograph of me um doing graph on a wall. That was just one of the inserts. If you open up the artwork, that's one that's of the right. inserts. It's a picture of me writing. And so I think from that photo, I probably did an interview with the source or one of those magazines about, about that. And they use that same picture in the magazine. So um, that's kind of where it started. That's kind of where people became aware that I was connected to Graph. But, you know, the story goes quite a bit. It starts a lot, quite a bit before that, 93. I love that it starts a little bit before that. We're going to get deep into this. Um, I had the I had the slaughterhouse in Lakehead, um, of the tape. Mm-hmm. Um, that thing unraveled my world, man. And, and and I do remember that that you were the can by the wall. I remember that significantly. Now you come to mention it. Yeah, yeah. That, that picture was right in the cassette. You fold it out. Yeah. Uh, any 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 kind of backstory to that? Was that just a regular day for you, or was it just like, oh, actually, I'm out painting? That was the that that was that was the day we were doing photos for the album for Slaughterhouse, and so I wanted to in some way um, communicate that I was I was into graph as well, and so um, our photographer that was there taking the photos that day, um, I, I brought I brought cans with me. I'm like, yo, I'm gonna do this little quick A right here on the wall and just just take pictures. 
Mm. And so I just did a quick throw up an A or whatever, the letter A, and um, he, he he captured one of the photos. There's more photos than that, but that's the one that we used. Mm, 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 wow. Let's take it back. Let's go. Let's go. You, you mentioned it from way back. Like, like, where did it all begin for you? Was this in it? Was this in the same timeline as you picking up a mic? Mm, a little, a little before, to be honest, um, because no, a little after, I would say a little after because I was in high school already. And so it was 80. I want to say it was 81 or 82. The, the documentary called Style Wars came out. Right. May, may have even been 83. I was definitely in high school, though. And so style, I saw that documentary, and it had a crazy impact on me because for my whole entire life, I saw a graph. It was on trains. I rode to school on trains. I saw it on the trains. Wherever I went, I saw a graph. But I didn't really, I never thought about it on the level of, oh, these are actual dudes that are in a crew mm. that, 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 that have a name that, that they, you know, this is what they do full time. And mm. I just became intrigued with the idea um, of, you know, young guys around New York city putting their names up everywhere. And so I was probably in my second year or third year of high school. And all of a sudden from that one documentary, Every time I rode the train, I started reading all the names. Now I, I could understand the writing. And so what I would do is I had like a, a I had a I had a, a notebook that I carried. And every time I rode the train, I would take the notebook out and I would write any new names I saw, whether it was inside the train or the outside. So I just and I had a list of must have been 200 names. Just I just wanted to document the different names that I saw from different writers. And that's how the passion began. And, and then when I, um, it was one of those summers where I was home from, I mean, where I was um, in high school and I decided to figure out if I could get my hands on some, 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 some paint and to see if I could, you know, try it, you know? Right. Um, and so that was the beginnings for me. Um, I, I, I really started out with just markers uh, in the building where I lived. Mm. Um, and in the projects, I would write in the elevator and on the hallway walls and stuff like that. And um, what projects you know, was this? What, what projects were were you? In how, how how Howard houses um, right. in Brooklyn, New York, and um, Brownsville. Right. And um, so, you know, I was just doing little tags at first with with markers, and you know, just trying to figure out what my hand was going to look like and what my letters were going to be. I, I fooled around with a few different names. Um, my first graph name was Klein, C L E I N. Sick. Um, All right. I, I, I don't know why I picked that name. I, to this day, I don't. I don't remember the reason I picked that name, but I, I do remember that my uncle, um, was kind of like trying to snitch on me to my mom's, telling her that I was. He thinks I'm writing on the walls and stuff, and uh, she act, she asked me about it. I said, No, that's not me. And he's like, He's the only one around here that will be writing Klein. Um, he just something something made him suspicious that it was me doing it. I don't know what it was. Maybe he saw, maybe he saw the same thing written on a, on a notebook or something, but there was something that got him suspicious about it. But in any event, um, I, I started on my journey and, and, and I wanted to try my first piece. And I remember, I remember going out to, to try my first piece at a, uh, at a, at a train tunnel in uh, East New York. Uh, Brooklyn. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. Talk to me about that. What, you know, okay. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm, I, actually, before we start actually going into that, um, I love the fact that you had a book that you had written down the names. That was like that. That almost became your A to Z because, like you were saying, that to define the words, you know, you had to learn the. Yeah, this was of a time where you had to learn how how it's read, isn't it? Right, right, and 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 guys were using all kinds of different wild styles and stuff like that, and so. Um, part of the challenge was being able to read certain pieces mm. and un understand what it said and what it meant and what the little, you know, letters, the, the, the little uh, written letters that were written inside the letters of yeah. the crew, the crew names, all of that stuff. So I just started writing down every name I could come up, you know, that I could see on a train or on a wall just to kind of see which ones I was seeing more than others. And, so there were there were a few that really just stood out to me that I would see all the time, and so 
you know, I obviously started to develop respect for the names that I saw the most. In the recesses of your mind, this this could actually be pretty hard to go that far back because you know you're in your local area. You're in you're in Brooklyn, and right. what are the names that you're that you're picking up like? As a as a youngster, what what names are really sticking out to you at the time around the area? Um, well, in my particular neighborhood, mm-hmm. there was only a couple of, of of guys that I saw. I saw their names all the time. Um, but on the train, mm. that was where more names were more prominent from the train rides. So. There was a, a guy that wrote Cost, C O S T, Cope, Cope 2, which of is course. a f- super famous uh, uh, graph, graph bomber. But at, at the time, I was still learning. So mm. I thought his two was a Z. So I was calling him Copez. So on my. Yeah, Yo, you're not on the my, only on one. My, but... <laughs> yeah. So on my, on my list of names, I had Copez as one of the people I found out. I learned, I learned later on, you know, that that, that, was, that was Cope 2. Yeah. Um, but um, man, there was so many. Is is the Wiz was one that I always saw. Um, when you say always saw, because you know these are folklore kind of names and yeah, yeah, yeah. But you I, literally I, saw that they were everywhere. I saw their names everywhere. Like wow. there's certain ones that just stood out to me because it's like you could go in, wherever you went, you saw a throw up. Yeah. You know, a, a Iz throw up somewhere. It was just always somewhere. Same thing with Cope. Cope was was everywhere. Of course. Um, man, there's so many names, yo. Oh, um, oh man, what's my guy's name? Um, dad. Um, there's a few dudes, man. I'm, I'm, I'm from the Style like, Wars era. From that era, absolutely. Like um, Scheme. I never saw. I didn't. I only. I only knew of Scheme from the movie, from the yeah. documentary. Um, yeah. I don't. I don't know if I ever saw an actual Scheme piece. Min one, uh, Min. Definitely saw Min, and I had that was one of the names that was on my on my list. Sick. Um, it was a dude that wrote Oz O Z. But in my neighborhood, there were two, no, three, very uh, big graph artists. They were they were big as far as the city citywide, but they were from Brownsville, from my neighborhood. Right. Um, and and one was R E. Yep. R E was. I think I swear Ari was almost on every train, on every car. He had a he had a, th- a tag, a throw up on every car. So Re, um, bust b u s t mm-hmm. was was everywhere. He would write bust, and he would he would piece bust, but then he would tag b t, and b t was all over the trains in those days. Wow. Um, yeah, he, he had a he had a a, a brother. Um, his brother wrote B I E by. He was a young young kid, younger than me, and he was going to the train yards. I wasn't. I was older than him, but I had the kind of supervision where I couldn't just be out at one in the morning running through train yards. So yeah. he would travel uh, with his brother, and then the the other guy from my neighborhood that was was up everywhere was piecing. All of that was Cito C I T O. He was his their crew was called M O G Masters of Graffiti. And there were Brownsville, Brooklyn, graph crew wow. that I that I that, that I learned about, and they were in a housing project just a, f- a few blocks from where I lived, and I found out that that's where they were from, and um, I knew people over there. We were actually over there a lot because there was a game room where we used to play music at, <laughs> and and they used to come to the game room, and so I found out through listening to people talking that these are the same names that I was seeing on the trains, and so. You know, I, I got I kind of got cool with Cito because he was kind of the leader of that MOG crew. Yeah, and and Cito, um, he 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 took me into the building that he lived in, and we took the elevator up to the very top floor, mm-hmm. and we went to the to the to the stairwell. And and when I tell you, when you open the door to the stairwell, when I tell you, the entire walls ceiling were completely covered with pieces. Like I it was like it was like it was like walking into a it was like walking into a painting. It was amazing. Like wow. I I, I could and, and that was like from like the top floor down. It, it went down like three or four flights, just full 
colorful. It, it, it was just, I was just like, wow. wow. Like I'm looking around, like the ceiling, everything is pieced and colors and characters. Mm. It was just, it, it, it blew my mind. And, and, and I wish I had camera back then. I, you know, all they had was disposable cameras. I didn't own a camera. So, but I wish I had a camera, man, because there was so much. And that, and that just opened my mind up to this world. And these, I was like, these guys are the real deal. Like they're out here and that's where they would practice. They would practice their, their, uh, their colors and their letters. They would practice in the stairwells, Man. which, which is, which is, which is crazy because like, there's no ventilation at all. So I don't know how they were painting like this in the stairwell, but man, they were doing it and, and never got, you know, obviously they were, there was no re- repercussions because you could yeah. tell that they, they were there constantly writing on these, on, in, in the hallways and doing full, full color pieces. That's so, crazy. That was my, that, that, that's what really made me like, yo, I want to do this. Like, I want to, I want to see if I can do this. I want to get my hands on some, some paint. And, and I remember, you know, racking up for the first time. Give us, my, where, where was this, where was the first time you racked? So there's, a, there, um, my, 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 fr- my original DJ is still my fr- great friend to this day, Steady Pace. <laughs> he, okay. he lived in, um, he lived in Linden Plaza, which is, uh, another housing development in East New York, not Brownsville, but East New York. Okay, and 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 his building was right above the A train yard. So the, the, the so the A train layup was literally below his building. Yo, so you could walk like when I came out of his building, we would go onto this. Uh, I forgot what street it was, and um, you would see the train just parked down there. And right across the street from the train yard was a store called TSS. People that are from East New York, from Brownsville, they know that store. Mm. TSS was right across the street, and that was the first place that we um that we went to to rack up. That's bonkers. And then his house was literally above the the yard. Too. Yeah, yeah, right above, right above. He, I forgot what floor he was on. He was on like the I don't know. It was a high. It was a tall building, maybe twenty something floors. He was probably like on fifteen. I, I can't remember what floor he was on. There's some Bermuda Triangle fake business going on there. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. so what, what happened when you did your first piece? Let's get into that. So that was um. I mentioned um, we walked through a, um, a freight train tunnel. So this is also in East New York. Well, actually, it might have been Brownsville, borderline Brownsville, East New York. Um, there was a freight train line that ran through the neighborhood. And so somebody, you know, told us that that was where you could, you know, bomb a freight train or whatever. So mm. we went over there. We had our cans with us. Um, and th- there was a tunnel that the train went through. We never... I, I, I didn't know where that tunnel went to because it was pitch black. But we decided as a group that we were going to walk through this tunnel to see where it led to. Like we literally just, you know, just throw caution to the wind. You got four or five young teenagers walking on tr- on the train tracks and it was pitch black at first, but eventually your eyes get get adjusted. And now you can see, you know, where you're walking and we can see old discarded paint cans and stuff. Wow. And we just walked, we walked until we saw light. We saw his light. And we just kept going until we got to the other side of the tunnel. Um, and there was a wall there with a bunch of different graph on it. And I just decided to pick pick a spot. We knew where we were when we came on the other side. I was like, oh, we're in uh, we were in Bushwick. We we're in a whole different neighborhood, but we we're in Bushwick. But we knew where we were. So I was like, all right, cool. So I picked the wall and I and my first piece was was a Klein piece, C L E I N. Um, I use, I use light blue and yellow. Um, it wasn't, the, the letters weren't really that dope, but I, you know, I, I it was my first piece. So I, I did, I did my best, but it was, it was a, a cool accomplishment for, for, for me. My mind's blown. I'm talking to Master Ace right now about breath. <laughs> this yeah. is like wicked mind blowing, bro. Like people are going to be losing their shit on this. Okay. Um, as a kid, being in that situation, very self-aware, but everything around you being senses on super heightened mode of, and you're in Bushwick, you're not even in your, like your manor, you're alone, right. underground, coming out, big machines, a wall that you just got to pick. And then there's the embracing of, oh, I'm just going to put my paint on this. Yeah. Well, that must have been mind-blowing for you. It was, it was, it was exciting. Um there was definitely a sense of danger because, you know, we could have been hit by a train. Like those trains were still running on those tracks. Um, and, but they were slow, you know, they were freight trains. So you could, you could hear them coming. 
you know, you could see, we were always looking back to see if we saw headlights, you know, mm-hmm. to the front of the train. So we, we were just really cautious. There was a lot of uh, debris down there in the tunnel, like old discarded, like furniture and tires. And I don't know how junk even got down there like that, but it was, it was pretty nasty down there. Mm. Um, but we were just excited, man, to, to explore this tunnel and see where it led. We found that wall. I decided to do my, my piece that day. And, um, I feel like there's a photo of that piece. I feel like there's a photo of that. Um, well, you, I, know I, I'm gonna, I, you know what I'm going to ask feel, you afterwards. <laughs> I, I feel like there is, but I just don't, I can't, I, I, I know I can, if I can picture it, then I mean that it does exist, but I just, I don't know where, where that might be. Wow. Did, was Klein always your name for, for, for a piece? Or what did it, did that take Klein shape? Was just, night? Yeah, no, no, Klein was just the name that I chose for that early, the very first part of my graffiti journey. Um, gotcha. And I picked those letters because I've, I fit, they, they went well together. I should have probably picked something with less letters, but I feel like I could do a good C. The L was easy. Mm. You know, I like doing the letter E. Because there was yeah. so many, so much you could do with the E. Yeah, I, feel I was obviously simple, and then I—I I don't know why I settled on that name, but I settled on it for the first part of my graffiti journey, and and, and that's what I—that's what I—that's what I was writing. What was your What was your throw up with Klein? Would it be an N and E or? It was. It was a C L. C L. Okay. It was just a C L. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, what did your name then? What What did it become over time? After so, Klein. So, so what happened was I, I stepped away from Graf um, for a while because me and the aforementioned Steady Pace mm. got caught riding on a, on a, on a, by, by these undercover detectives riding on a, uh, on a store wall. Sure. And we got, you know, we got shook up pretty good. What happened was we were walking around looking for store gates to bomb, we found one. It's broad daylight, by the way. It's not like it was at night. We were, it was broad daylight. We saw this 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 uh, gate and decided to do a quick tag or whatever with the with, with the cans. Yeah. As we're riding on the wall, a car pulls that di- comes directly at us and pulls up on the sidewalk like it's gonna hit us. What? And these two undercover cops get out and we're caught. Like we're red handed. Like there's no running. Like the car was up on top of us and they were out of the car so fast. There was nowhere to, nothing to do. That sounds extreme. <laughs> sounds So, you know, back in those days, cops were pretty rogue. You know, there wasn't a lot of, um, you know, to answer to. So, you know, they got out and they kind of like was, you know, pushing us around a little bit, which, you, you know, what, what the fuck y'all doing? You know, mm-hmm. what's wrong with y'all? And, um, we were just like speechless, like caught and scared the hell. And so, they didn't want to deal with the paperwork of arresting two two juveniles. Yeah. So they took the paint and one of the cops took a can of the white paint that we had. He said, hold your hands out. And we held out our palms and he spray painted our palms completely white. What the like, f- like fuck? To- completely covered our palms with white paint. And... He said, now get the fuck out of here. And he took the took the cans, they got in the car and they drove off. So now, oh, and he sprayed the top of my hat too. I know he sprayed our clothes. <gasps> the top of my the top of my leather hat. I had a leather, um, a leather Kango on. He, he sprayed the top of my hat and then he sprayed oh. the palm, the palms of our hands. So now you, you gotta understand, nobody in my family knows that I'm out here doing this stuff. So now I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get rid of a like two two white palms. Yeah. <laughs> Of, of 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 probably glossy white paint. Yeah. Um. So I, I went home with my hands in my jacket. Steady pace was like, "Yo, I'm done. I'm never writing again." Because he's really? like, "We could have went." To, he's like, "We could have went to jail." And I was like, "You're right." And, and I I, I kind of I was feeling them, but I I still I still had the desire. I still wanted to 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 do it. There yeah. was still something pulling me. He never wrote again, but it was still something pulling me towards it. So. I went home with my hands hidden in my pockets. Huh. I, I went in the bathroom and man, I must have been in there 30 minutes with soap and scrubbing and, and, and with a wash rag trying to get that paint off. I never, mm. it took me a while to get it all off, but I got it off enough to where it wasn't going to be noticed at dinner. Mm. Um, but, you know, I was just hiding my hands for the next few days until I got it all the way off. But man, that was a crazy experience. And um, 
it made me kind of step away from street bombing. I was mm-hmm. still writing in, I was still writing in my peace books and stuff like that, but I stepped away from the street bombing for for a while because I knew I was I was kind of risking risking a lot at that point. Well, paint was very different back then as well. Trying to get it off hands, I would imagine, is a nightmare. Let, let me let me let me go back a little bit to what you yeah. were saying about um, the the rubbish being underneath the um, bridge at, at the time, time when, yeah. because when I when I go back there, um, and this is only a few documents that I've watched and and, and such, but there isn't there there is a, a constant um, dialogue within those eighties. Um, documentaries of, of New York, how mm-hmm. um, dilapidated it was, how um, underfunded it was, the, the crack cocaine problem, the homelessness, the, yeah. it was, you know, it was far from the, the, the machine it is now. And, you know, pick, can you give us a picture painting, if you can, in word of what that was like and, and, in, and what you think, you know, what, gave the surgeons of graffiti its prominence at that time. What do you think it ultimately was? I think it ultimately was young kids with not, with no identity that wanted to be recognized, that wanted to in some way be noticed. That's what it was. It was, it was that desire for people to, to, to see your name, whether they really knew it was you or not, you knew that it was you. So just like I tell you, I'm writing all of these names down in my school book. Those guys were putting their name up so that somebody would take notice and be like, oh, yeah, I saw such and such on the train. I saw him. Even though I didn't know the person, I saw his name. And in a lot of cases, their names preceded them. I met some of those guys later on in life. But, um, you know, you know, I, I Cope 2 was probably one of the people that... Um, stood out to me the most. And when I, when I finally met him, um, he actually came to my video shoot for, for, um, my song, uh, um, Saturday night live. He's actually his, one of his pieces is actually in the video. Uh, he came to the shoot. He did, he did his classic Coke to throw up and, and we, and, and, it, and it's in the video. And so I met him that day and I was like really meeting somebody that was famous um, at least famous to me from from a, from a graph standpoint, like that was like a cool a cool thing. That's crazy. That's almost like you know when you're doing something right, something like that happens, and you kind of meet one of your you know the, the tick box heroes of like actually I've got the guy on my video. That's bonkers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that was a cool that was a cool day. Um, and you must have met so many other writers in your time as a as a rapper, you know, and you know, superstar MC. There must have been some crazy moments where you had to pinch yourself. You know, the kid inside you's like suddenly, yeah, like, yeah. What? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Um, I should so after I stepped away from Graph for a while, um, I went off to college, and once I got to college, it was a little bit easier because. There's nobody writing graph on the college campus. If I if 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 graph showed up, I would be one of the first culprits. So uh-huh. I knew I wasn't going to be writing on. So that's the, that that allowed me to kind of like get it out, you know, just leave it alone, keep it out, out of. It wasn't out of my system, but it was a way for me to not be worried about it because I didn't see it. Mm. Um, but right around that time, we were talking about my slaughterhouse album and that video shoot. Um, right before that album was out or maybe it had just come out um i was outside of a salt and pepper uh release party I, I remember this very well um and we were waiting on some other guys we were about to go into this party and some dudes were out there too and one of them recognized me and i was like yeah whatever whatever we just started you know small talk and i don't know how the topic of graph came up but he was like, yo, we right. I was like, where are y'all right? He was like, yeah, yeah. I said, man, I used to love, I used to love writing. Like, you know, I said, I left it alone when I got to college. I said, and you know, one of, one of my regrets was I never really got to like really bomb the trains or do any of that stuff. And he's like, oh yeah, we, we bomb, we do all that. And at this point I'm a grown man now, I'm out of college. And mm. so now I'm like, man, well, 
if y'all ever go, if y'all ever go out, like, let me know. I will, give me here's my number. Like, I'll roll with y'all because I just wanted to just try it again. And so, yeah. the guys that the guy I met that day, his name is Lou One Sixty Seven. That's what he wrote, Louis. Louis right. One Sixty Seven, and it was a guy, one of his good friends named Rule, and they're from the Bronx. So they're from the Bronx, and he's the person who actually introduced me to Cope too. Because when I was talking about different writers, I mentioned uh-huh. his name. He's like, "Oh, I know Cope." I'll tell them to come to the video. Like, it was like literally like that. So, um, but those guys, Lou and Rule, and there's another guy, Trav, um, yeah. they took me, they took me out, um, years later, they took me out on my really, my first true, you know, bombing missions. Um, and this is with an, this is, I'm on my second album at this point. So, it's kind of crazy to be out out doing it, but it was <laughs> it, it, it was something that I didn't get out of my system. So I went bombing with them several nights um, in the Bronx as well as Brooklyn. Um, we uh, we hit a couple of freight trains. Um, I was still learning. I was still trying to get my you know my letters together and all that. Like I remember Lou helping me kind of do a piece, one of my later pieces. I had I needed help. You know I was I did because I left it alone mm-hmm. for so long. Yeah, yeah. But that was. Those guys were instrumental in me kind of like fulfilling what it, whatever it was that was in me that made me want to bomb and just try it again. Mm. And and um, so yeah, I did it, man. And, and that was like '93 when I when I started bombing again. So Slaughterhouse, you'd been signed. It's all popping off, and uh, you're full of surprises, man. Right? So so you're telling me you just like, oh, fuck it. You know what? I'm just gonna go and risk the shit and just go and just do. do yeah, bombing. yeah. Yeah, and we got chased. Whoa. We got chased. We got chased one night, right, right next to. It's called the Jackie Robinson, Jackie Robinson Parkway now, but back then it was called the Interboro. We were riding on the side of the highway because there's some good spots, some good little highway <laughs> wall parts that were real visible. So we were we were bombing that, and there was a police car that rolled by oh, and made a, and made a and made a U turn, and so we had to just take off, and it it was like literally. It went from painting to run, like 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 a, a, a panic, panic run, <laughs> and 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 we all took off. And I remember <sighs> having to having to 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 jump down. Like we, we were we were running full speed, and then there was a there was a, there was a drop. And I remember miscalculating my steps. What? And fell pretty much chest first. Luckily, I didn't hit my face, but. I took a bad fall. Like, yeah, you would have been winded, right? I was winded and I took a bad fall. I fell right on my chest. And I remember Lou was like, you all right? And I just jumped up and kept running and I'm all scraped up and stuff. And we got away. Obviously, we hid or whatever. We got away. And I was like, man, that was a close one right there. You know, that was that was close. I could have we could have I could have really. And I started thinking about what, you know, I got videos out. <laughs> this 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 could be this could be this could be bad like yo yeah this could be bad so i i was like you know what maybe i need to chill um because then they were telling me about the vandal squad in new york and from what i understand the vandal squad were, a lot of those guys were undercover yeah they were they were graph writers but they were really undercover police officers damn and, and they were you know they were in the in the mix of the graph community and they were just trying to learn who wrote what? Wow. And That's so fucked. I was like, man, I would be, I would be a good prize for that police officer if I get caught. So I need to really chill. Cause if they're out here like learning, learning who people are and, and putting faces with names, mm-hmm. with the graph names, I'm gonna get caught. So that also made me chill. Uh let's go back to the more uncomfortable feelings and conversation of. Uh, when you were told about the, you know, the Vandal Squad, the Graffiti Squad that, that, that New York had kind of put in place, and that was like a revelationary thing directly after you'd fallen on your chest and you'd done, you know, you'd you'd scratched the itch, yeah. Then then suddenly a perspective kicks in of like, oh, hold on a minute, I'm on a major label here. Hang on, what am I doing? Yeah, that yeah. must have sent the EBGBs into you for months, no? Yeah, yeah. I I, I said I I just said, listen, I got to stop. Yeah, like I got I have to stop because. The more, the more known I get, the, the the more of a chance of me getting caught because, you know, the graph graph writers they're talking, 
yo, you know, Master Ace writes, right? Oh, yeah, well, he right. At that, at that point, I was writing ASC. So it was going to be an easy catch, yeah. you know, for me. And so I just I just said, let me stop before I get 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 get, get got. So I just, mm. I just, I decided to just, you know, stop. I mean, I, I still did stuff outside of the, the country because I did go bombing in, in Berlin, Germany. I mean, not Berlin, Germany, sorry, Cologne, Germany. Uh, I met a guy named DJ Schneider, who I'm still friends with to this day, but we met all the way back in 2000 or 2001. Mm. And I was telling him my, my bombing stories and he's like, oh man, we, we, we write, you want to go write? And I was like, and I'm going to go bombing in Germany. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and they, and they took me out. They took me out and, and you know, it was, it was, it was the night I had a show that night. Yeah. So I, I probably got off the stage 2 a.m., something like that. And we went out like 3 a.m. And we're bombing um, a highway in Cologne, Germany. And the police came. And what? The police, and the police came and we had to run and hide in the bushes. Oh, and sh- I got a can of, I got a can of silver in my, in my coat pocket, right? Yeah. And we're crouched down, bending over, hiding from the police. I don't know it at the time, but while I'm bent over, the 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 cap to the silver is pressed down and it's just spraying <laughs> all the all the paint is coming out of the can inside my jacket. Oh shit. And it went all the way through all my clothes to my skin. What? So when the police finally left, I stand up and I got this giant silver stain <laughs> on my on my hoodie, on my t-shirt, and on my Until- skin. <laughs> yeah, this, I, this is while I'm on tour, right? And I was like, "Man, like, what am I doing? Like, if I get arrested for graft in Germany, that's not mm-hmm. going to be good." Yeah, I don't even know what the laws are out here. <laughs> that that could that could be like ten years in jail. For, I don't know what's going on. Like, I'm bugging right now. So that was another one of those incidents. Saying, "Ace, relax, like, chill. Like, if it's not a permission wall, you don't, you don't need to be out there bombing." So. That incident happened, and, and from from what uh, DJ Schneider tells me, well, he, he told me this like maybe five years ago. He's like, "Yo, your 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 tag is still up. Like nobody went over it. Like what? It's like wow. yeah, it's still there. That happened, and that was two thousand one. And he said it's still up. Like five years ago, he told me it was still up. Wow. So I don't know if it's still up right now, but that would be crazy. I mean. Yeah, we we kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the podcast before we started. To be fair, guys, um, you know. I think you and me orbited a particular time with the same agent and we were kind of, I think we might've even been on the same billing here and there. When you're in, when you're in Berlin, there is a, a feeling of uh, a, a, a more leniency, a less, you know, more tolerance to that sort of activity. And mm-hmm. because of the lawlessness, you know, we're so used to particular protocol in our own countries. When you go over there and you, it's almost like, well, actually what, what I don't know ain't going to hurt me. Let's just go. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to say, Ace, uh, I was taking a punt when I hit you up, bro. And I swear to God, I had no idea that there was these... What's with the itch? What is the itch of graph? What makes people... What makes the likes of us want to do it and and then think later? What is that? Well, for me, I think think I'm an artist at heart. So creating is always going to be exciting and something that I want to do what whether it's however it is artistically or whatever um but i think the thing that made me keep coming back to it is because i didn't feel like i had i wanted to reach a point where i'm like yeah i'm 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 pretty good like i wanted to get to that point where i could say look at look at what i did on the wall and go yo that's pretty that's pretty dope i'm 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 good and so i was chasing that like from those early days when me and Steady Pace got caught and got our hands painted, I was still learning. I, w- I never got really good at that point. I didn't get good yet. And so, you know, me and Lou, 167 and Rule back in 93, whenever it was. Big writers, man, yeah. Yeah, you know, get, meeting them and then going out with them, seeing what their ability was and saying, oh, I, that's, that's the level I got to try to get to. Um, I was just, all I was trying to do was get to a point where I could put something up and be like, that's dope. And, you know, I was, I was trying to get there. That, that, that was what I was chasing. It's, it's, um, it's habitual, isn't it? And yeah. oh man, isn't it a dream though, you know, that when you, 
when you touch down in another country, it's like that extra bit of fun activity, that kind of nice warm feeling of, you know, you versus a wall, that Zen of not thinking for a couple of hours, but being in another country doing it. That's kind of, that's a pretty strong catalyst, isn't it? No, it is. It is. Um, You just got to, I just realized that it has to be something that is a permission situation and not um, where I'm trying to break the law. Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I got, I got over that, you know, that adrenaline rush of, Oh, we're doing something dangerous and against the law and let's go Mm -hmm. for it. Like, as I got older and matured, I was like, that's not the move because, you know, I have a family that I have to take care of and I can't be getting locked up for, 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 for this. It just doesn't make sense. So I just had to be smarter about my moves. Mm, yeah, I feel you. Um, the world of hip hop, again, just, you know, just going back to very briefly, the, the, the world of hip hop, it's an inclusive sport, isn't it? It's, you know, you can't just sit there and watch on the sidelines. You've got to be a part of it, whether you're a DJ or MC, a B-boy, beatboxer. You know, you've got, you've just yeah. got to put your, 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 your hat down in the ring and you, you go for the, you go for the jugular. It ain't no sitting down business. That's and right. there, there's other, there's other contemporaries mm-hmm. of your generation and a little bit further out, you know, you've got your artifacts, you've got MF Doom, rest in peace. So I believe you're, you, you know, you, you worked alongside, um, yeah. of course. Um, and then, and then you've got your KRS ones and your, your Joey cracks and, you right. know, uh, these, these, these characters, man, like, do you ever get into conversations with these guys when you meet up with them about graph? I've talked to KRS before because he, he saw a piece, he saw a piece somewhere in Europe and he's like, yo, I saw you up out in, I think it was Switzerland or something. What? And I, you know, but those were like permission walls. Those, I mean, I had, it was cool. I was yeah. able to write without, you know, getting in trouble. Um, but yeah, he just, just the acknowledgement of, you know, somebody else out here that, that's doing records and also writing graph, you know? Yeah, but I got to tell you, I ain't ever heard stories like, what you've just said come out of them <laughs> like you know i mean i am yet to be talking to them on podcast but i'm telling you now like that everybody's got story i promise you they got stories really i promise you they all have stories yeah we need these stories documented bro like this is some stuff that i don't think people would ever ever comprehend coming out of my yeah. stories this is my fucking crazy hey, man hey you know that it's part of it's part of my story it's part of my journey and, and it's funny isn't it because you know, looking at the Slaughterhouse cover and taking that picture as the the reference point to what actually becomes this conversation now. Do you think that was actually the intention at the time of taking that? It's almost like it's a salute. It's a, yeah, I, I, I've i dabbled. I've done it. I wouldn't call myself. It, it, it's not my career. Um, right. But but it, but do you think that was part of the thing? It was almost like a calling out of like, yeah, and I do this too. Yeah, it was that, and it was to acknowledge the other, the 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 often forgotten element of hip hop that most people don't talk about, mm. um, because it was kind of a dirty secret in New York, um, because they made it such a, they made it against the law to the point where people had to hide that the fact that they were doing it, mm. hide hide hide, the, hide their identities or whatever, but. Um, you know, I just it was it was a way for me to to big up those cats that went out there and risked it every night. You know, there's a song on Slaughterhouse called Mad Ones. And um I have a line on that song where I say, Yeah, I rock like your grandma's chair, peace to graffiti writers everywhere. So yeah. it was just a way for me to send send a little tip of the hat to 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 those artists out there that are that are that are risking it all just to get their names up and to get that street fame. Yeah. Bro, that, that whole Slaughter album was so seminal in my mind. What was the tune that was like freestyled? It was like live. So it was like the B-side of the tape. What was that called? Um, I, I, It was just an interlude. It, I, don't think it, there wasn't, I don't think it was a title. That, it was just that alone changed my yeah. whole... It was almost like you'd scooped up a where I wanted to be at 15. <laughs> I just put it on the record and I'm like, yo, I want that right now. <laughs> like, no, that me. was a that was a that was a Big Daddy Kane release party. Was it? Wow. Yeah, yeah. It was a release party. And um there was a lot of notable rappers that got on the stage that night. Uh from 
from Greg Nice to Just Ice to Lakim Shabazz mm. to to Biz Marquis to Jay Z to uh, Ill not Ill and Out Scratch but just Ill Ill was up there. Uh, uh, they uh, are under s- they are they aren't sung loud enough. Ill and Out Scratch. I used to love their stuff. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ill, Ill Ill rapped on there too. So there was. I dug it up recently. Um, my, my boy sent it to me. And it was, I think there was 12 of us or, or, or nine of us that rapped. Wow. Yeah, I got the list. Somebody sent me the list recently. Uh, my DJ Mr. C sent me the list because he he's the one who recorded it. So he has the original recording of that night. He just gave me that piece so I could turn, I could use it as an interlude for my album. That's crazy. That's got to be out there online somewhere, that, that live thing. It must be. Mr. C, oh, come on. Oh, it might be. It might be. It might be on YouTube or something like that. To, uh, to a young man like me at the time and to, you know, to, to see and hear you drop lyrics like that, see the picture, then that live environment, I mean, it had it all in a, in a package for its time. And but rest in peace to Bismarck Key, of course. Definitely. God, you know, I mean, he, the beatboxing, he, he was my inspiration, you know. Um, and I think your your um, DNA, you, you being able to drop that in a 90, what was it, 92, 93 era? Ooh, that. You know, to have Graf recognized at that point, there wasn't many people doing it like that, Ace, you know what right. I mean? Right, there wasn't, there wasn't. It was important to me, though, because it was part of who I was. Yeah. Well, we very much value you passing through, my brother. Any shout outs you want to give? Any uh, any props from my V you want to give up? No, just um check out my website, masterace.com. I got all of my merch up there, t-shirts, hats, socks, you know, vinyl, CDs, a bunch of different cool, cool items on there, hoodies. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh just um follow me on IG, Master Ace, Master Ace Picks. P-I-C-S. Follow mm-hmm. me on Twitter, Master Ace. The Facebook is Master Ace Official. And um, look for the new album with me and Marco Polo. Coming soon. Woo! It's the heaters. You've been warned. Master Ace, thank you so much, my brother. Thank you for sharing the stories, man. Absolutely. Appreciate it. My guy. Killer Keller Podcast. I like him was out fast. You know it is. Caring, sharing. You're just all one and the same over here, all right? Don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people, all right? Peace. 